children, welcome to our grammar class. Today we are going to study about the modal auxiliaries. Now, modal auxiliaries uh, comes from the word, the modal word comes from uh, the basic word mood. So, modal auxiliaries are those verbs that show the mood of a of the subject. Now, the words like shall, should, will. So, here are some words like shall, should, will, would, can, could, may, might, must, ought, need, use and dare. These are some of the modal auxiliaries. Now, generally what do we need to know? that the modal auxiliaries and the primary auxiliaries they are uh, they are also said to be 24 friends of not. So, they are termed as 24 friends of not right. So, these are the modal auxiliaries which generally tell the mood of the subject. Now, they are 24 in number. So, modal auxiliaries are 24 in number that is they are am, is, are, was. So, these are all the modal auxiliaries that you must know and in this chapter we will learn how to use all these modal auxiliaries. Now, auxiliaries are generally divided into two parts that is the primary auxiliaries and the modal auxiliaries. So, as per the primary auxiliaries, they are am, is, are, was, were and these are all the primary auxiliaries shown here. The rest among the 24 auxiliaries apart from the primary ones, they are termed under the modal auxiliaries. So, these are all the modal auxiliaries that are shown here. Now, we will learn how to use the modal auxiliaries shall and should. So, it is used for future indefinite tense or you can say simple future tense like I shall go to park, I shall enjoy holiday today. So, in this way we use it as a simple future tense. Now, we shall play hockey. Then shall is used for I and V. Generally, it is used for I and V. So, here you can see shall is generally used for I and V. Now, to even show the promise, the determination or command, we use the word shall. As you can see, you shall get your watch tomorrow. That is a promise. Then, Sita shall apologize for her mistake. Here we are showing the determination. Then you shall not be absent tomorrow. So, that is a command that is given in this case. Now, let us see how we can use shall and should it. Now, should is the past tense of shall. So, should is the past tense of shall. Now, how do we use should over here for showing the uh, future in the past that is I told you that I should go to the next go the next day and we said that we should wait for him. So, we tell something that is going to happen which has an effect in the future but it is told in the past tense. Now, we said that we should wait for him right. Then we can also uh, show the duty or obligation like people should obey the laws of the country. So, this is shown as the duty of the uh, people of the country. Now, this is about the duty or obligation. Next, we have when we uh, tell about the advice, when we give advice suggestion or inferences, then the word should is used for 
these purposes like he should do his work regularly right then the students should not play on the road so this this is where we use the word shall and should now we come to the next modal auxiliary will that is will and its past tense is would so it is also used for in the case of simple future and then promise or willingness right so for showing the promise or willingness we can use the word will i will give her my car then even how we will show the determination or a threat so determination or threat can be shown as i will find out why he was beaten so it is a determination that is to be shown then would is the past tense as i told you it is a past tense of will and in the future uh, tense to show something happened in the past is termed in the in this like this in the sentence like uh, he promised that he would return the book so he promised that he would return the book that happened in the past and he told it for the future that is he will give it he would give it sometime in the future then another thing is that a polite request can be made through it so would you please help the little boy so you can see with the tone of the uh, word uh, tone of how he is speaking that shows the politeness or request then for the past tense like right? frequent activities and happenings that occurred in the past like the beggar would come every day for food right so this is something that happened in the past and will continue to happen in the future then we will know how to use can and could so can is the present tense and could in the past form so can is also used to show the uh, power ability or capacity so in order to show the power ability and capacity we can use the word can that is i can solve this sum so i have the ability to solve this sum then for asking the permission for asking the permission like he can write the answer now you can eat mango so it is in a way giving permission then the past tense of can is could so how we will use the word could to show the power or ability of your work and then it is it can also be shown as the polite request so this is how we can use the word can and could now coming to the next auxiliary verb may and might so the next auxiliary verb that comes to our a uh, course is the use of me and might so make a prayer it is used for to tell the wish tell the purpose or possibility or permission so in all the cases you will see that these kind of sentences are given over here so we can show it like this so may god bless you with a son this is a wish that is being delivered then purpose he works hard that he may pass that is the purpose of working hard so he hari may come today that is a possibility maybe he will come today so something possible that can happen that can occur that is shown over here then permission may i come in so generally when you are in uh, out of your class and you want to enter the class you ask the teacher may i come in ma'am so what is that you are asking for a permission so permission is been given like this then the past tense of me is might so how do we use the word might the people said that india might win the championship trophy so there is a possibility there is a possibility for the country to win the championship trophy so india might win the championship trophy so in other word that for remote possibility means that can happen in a later future 
that Lata is working hard, she might stand first. So, it might happen in the uh, near future and that is why Lata is working hard. Then use of must. So, this is a this shows the compulsion or necessity. So, must is used generally to denote a compulsion or necessity of the work that is you must obey your officer. So, there is a compulsion you must obey your officer. We must obey the laws. So, this is the this is showing the compulsion or necessity of the work. Then certainty of belief like you must finish your homework in an hour. So, that is the certainty of belief. He must be a thief. So, it is a showing certain kind of uh, certainty, certain time, kind of uh, work that uh, is uh, that can be possible. Then use of ought, ought. Now, how do we use ought to show the moral duty? So, moral duty is generally shown with the word ought. We ought to obey our elders. So, here you can see that we ought to obey our elders. You ought to help the poor fellow. That is your moral duty to help the poor fellow. Then strong possibilities can also be told by the word, by the use of the word ought. So, strong possibility like Indian team ought to win the final cricket match. So, there is a possibility of the Indian team to win the cricket match. The next modal auxiliary is the verb need. The need shows the absence of obligation. Like, so that is I need not drink tea. I need not work hard. So, I need not drink tea. So, it shows, shows the absence of obligation. Then need not have plus past participle. So, when we are using the verb have, had, has, then obviously the verb that is being used will be used in the past participle or you can say the third form. This is if you are using have then obviously third form of the verb will be used. Next, coming to the next word is dare. So, sentence like uh, they dare me to swim across this river. So, what is it saying? It is a dare means that it is showing something of a challenge like he dares me to swim across this river. They do not dare me to swim across this river. So, these kind of sentences can be made with the verb dare. Coming to the uh, modal auxiliary used to. So, used to is used to explain something that had happened in the past tense, that has happened, that has been happening in the past tense. I used to play cricket at a school. So, I used to do it sometimes in the past that is not right now. So, this kind of sentences can be also used with the auxiliary, modal auxiliary used to. Now, here some exercises regarding all these modal exercises, uh, auxiliaries. So, hope these exercises can be easily done if you understand the modal auxiliaries with clarity. So, go through all the uh, modal auxiliaries, learn them by heart and you will be able to do all the exercises. Thank you and happy learning.